In the last video, we saw Aileen enjoying herself and thinking how she is getting healthier thanks to Sijun's food. She wanted to quickly become a healthy adult so that she could get out of the tower and show her polymorphed form to Sijun. However, as she was getting out of the shower, she suddenly had a stroke and fell to the ground. Her dragon heart was overloaded with mana, and if it wasn't stopped, she would die. She called out Sejun's name before losing consciousness, and the system immediately contacted him while he was examining the new product made by his honeybees, the honey jelly that could improve his talent. Sejun was eager to see what would be the effect of honey jelly made from the cherry tomato flowers and found that it could improve mana-related talents. Unfortunately, he did not have any such talents, so it was useless for him. Just then, the system contacted him and issued him an emergency quest to save Aileen's life. Sejin freaked out on hearing this and asked the details about Aileen's condition. He blamed himself when he learned that Aileen has a mana overload and then asked the system how he could help her. The system told him that the honey jelly can save Aileen, and everyone gave away their share to Aileen, curing her dragon heart temporarily. On the other side of the cosmos, Aileen's grandpa Kaiser was trying to reach her, but instead, he got a report from the tower's emergency system about Aileen's health condition. They check out the details and find that someone named Sijan helped her. While Aileen's dad is relieved, Kaiser is not. He was enraged that his beloved granddaughter chose another guy to ask for help over him, and he is never going to forgive Sijan for that. Back in the tower, Aileen wakes up but immediately freaks out as she recalls what just happened before she lost consciousness. She is surprised that she is still alive and begins wondering how her dragon heart is doing. She checks it and finds that her heart is stable. She can't understand what happened with her. But then she sees her crystal ball and decides to see if it can tell her something. As soon as she touches the crystal ball, the system floods her with messages about her condition. It tells her that she has consumed honey jelly and Si Jun has completed the quest. Aline finally understands what happened and realizes that at the last moment, she called Si Jun for help. She feels a bit embarrassed about doing something straight out of romance novel but then she begins wondering how Sijun stabilized her dragon heart. She then sees the information about the honey jelly and understands that leveling up his beekeeping skill must have allowed Sejun to create a new item. Aline is a bit disappointed because she was unconscious when she ate the honey jelly, and now she doesn't remember its taste. However, she feels like this honey jelly that enhances mana-related talents was just made for her situation. Suddenly, she corrects her posture as she gets the urge to repay the favor to Sejun because that is what she must do as a proud and righteous dragon of the Fratani family. That is why she decides to reward him with something precious from her treasure room. So the treasure room has things like the Holy Sword Excalibur, other magic weapons, Sauron's ring, and even the One Piece. But Aileen doesn't think anything is good enough to give to Sagun. She thinks that there must be an item here that the tower farmer Sajun needs. She begins thinking about what one needs during farming when suddenly her gaze goes to the most valuable item in the treasure trove a majestic black dragon statue. Well, it seems Aileen has decided what she is going to give Sejun, and she is certain that he will really like it. On the other hand, Sejun is sleeping peacefully in his house with Kyuang and the rabbits. Suddenly he gets a message from Aileen that wakes him up. She thanks him for saving her life, and Sejun immediately gets up, asking if she is all right. He is very relieved because the quest he got from the system made him worried. Aileen thanks him because she feels better now, and he is the reason. Sijun says that he finally got to learn why she likes to eat magical cherry tomatoes, because of the system. He says that his crops must have put a lot of strain on her dragon heart, but Aileen tells him it was not because of him. She explains that she would have these seizures regularly every ten years. Going by that rate, the seizures should have happened a long time ago, but they were delayed quite long thanks to Sijun's crops. Aline assures Sejun that because of his special crops, her heart has become more steady, and that was what delayed the seizure. Sejun feels really relieved on hearing that he is not the reason for Aileen's bad health. He then offers Aileen some more honey jelly that the bees made in the meantime. He says that this will help her even more with her dragon heart, but Aileen replies that she feels too shameless to be on the receiving end of his goodwill always. She says that she wants to repay the debt of having her life saved first. Suddenly she issues a new quest to Sejun asking him to shout her name loudly towards the sky. And the reward is something really big and good. That's what she said. She said. Sejin asks if something big and good can be dangerous, but Aileen tells him to shout her name first. However, she tells him that she doesn't know if it is dangerous or not, so he should shout in an empty place away from his house. This makes Sejin even more doubtful, but Quing tells her not to doubt Aileen. They go to some distance from his house, 
where Si Jun inhales a lot of air and then shouts Aileen's name as loudly as he can. His voice echoes through the vast 99th floor, but nothing happens. Suddenly, the system window pops up in front of him, telling him that he has completed the quest, and as a reward he has received a fountain commemorating Aileen's 100th birthday. Sejin is shocked to hear this when suddenly, Aileen's gift arrives on top from the sky, right on top of him. Si Zhang Kuang and the Black Rabbit are terrified of the gift that is going to crush them, and they make it out of the way, just as the statue lands on the ground. Si Jun is still reeling from the shock as he asks what was that. He wonders what is up with this gigantic statue, and why Aileen sent it to him. Suddenly, the jaw of the statue opens, and water starts pouring out of it. The system window tells him that it is the fountain commemorating Aileen's 100th birthday. The great black dragon Kaiser Fratani, who was Eileen's grandpa, commissioned skilled dwarf artisans to create this fountain on his granddaughter's 100th birthday. It is made entirely from premium black marble and modeled after Kaiser himself. The two eyes of the statue are made from magic stones that were personally enchanted by Anton Fratani, Aileen's dad. The fountain has the ability to generate water on its own or pull water from any source within a 10-kilometer radius. It is an S-grade item with a level 50 water generation skill, but other skills are hidden. Sejin doesn't understand what to do with the fountain, but to keep Aileen's heart. He says that it is really a big and amazing reward. Aileen tells him that this will help him cut down on the time spent watering the crops. Sejin realizes she is right, and now he will have an easier time during irrigation. Because the fields have expanded a lot, he has trouble watering all the fields with the watering cans of the rabbits. He thanks Aileen for being so considerate about them. He then asks her why the other skills of the fountain are censored, and even Aileen has no idea because her grandpa never told her. However, she can tell him that the fountain has no usage limit and asks him to call for its control system, because that should also have arrived with it. Sejin is glad to hear the no usage limit deal, and then calls out its control system, where suddenly, an otherworldly Peace 4 controller pops up out of nowhere. It is the fountain's magic controller that allows the user to freely control the power, the direction, and even the movement of the statue. Well, Sejan is surprised to see that even dragons use game controllers and wonders if he can really move the statue with this. He presses some buttons and the statue starts moving for real. Sejan is amazed, and childlike excitement fills him as he gets the thrill of playing video games in real life. Quan can't believe that Sejan is making the statue move, but the Black Warrior Rabbit wants to try his hand at it too. Sejan makes the statue do some Jojo poses, which the rabbits and Quinn copy. He makes them dance around, but then one motion of the statue freaks Quinn out, and as a reflex, he punches it, breaking the statue's horn. Well, Sijun looks just like a parent whose kid has scratched a Lambo. He freaks out thinking about the great damage, and at the same time, Aileen gets a danger alarm while she is cozying in her room. She decides to check it out and asks Sijun if anything is wrong. He is nervous but tells her that everything is fine and they were just taking a closer look at the statue, because it is so cool. Everyone else around him is nervous too as they stand near the statue, whose horn has been fixed not so skillfully. To distract Aileen before she finds out what he did, Sijun asks her if she is interested in something tasty. Obviously, she says yes, and both Sijun and the Grey Rabbit, who fixed the horn, are relieved. Aileen enjoys her tasty meal, feeling relieved that Sijun likes her gift. And on the other hand, Sijun is relieved that she didn't catch on that he broke the statue. At the same time, on the 67th floor, where the war between the Tower residents and the Red Locusts is still going on, the Silver Wolves are collecting the corpses of the dead Red Locusts while the Lizardmen replace the Tough Blade Green Onions. This time, even the Wolf Pups are there, and Elka's son is eager to help. He leaves to fetch more Red Locust corpses, and Elka tells him not to go too far. But yeah. um, Elka's wife is worried because, even though she agrees with her husband that this experience is important for kids, this place is too dangerous. Elka assures her that he understands her worries, but tells her that it is safe right now because the Red Locust, the Reds are being subdued right now. The only problem is that there are too many of them. However, because they always move in a set pattern, they have figured out their attack timing, so there is very little chance of them attacking. Moreover, the bug collection event only occurs when the tough blade green onions are being replaced by the Lizardman warriors. Elka assures his wife that if anything happens, the Lizardmen will protect them. On the other side, his son ventures a bit too far and picks up a red locust from the ground. He excitedly tells his dad that he found an unharmed red locust, 
unaware that a huge horde of red locusts is right behind him. His parents freak out, but luckily, just as the red locusts were to reach their pup, a lizardman warrior comes there and slashes them all away. He tells everyone to run as he takes the pup into custody. He orders to alert everyone that the red locusts are changing their attack pattern. That's all for this video. I know the new chapter was delayed, and it's shorter too, but still, it was good like always. Let us see how does Seijun use the Dragon Fountain, and what new development happens with the locusts in the next episode. Till then, check out other videos on our channel.